Hi, folks. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes uh, so that more people can join before we officially get started, but welcome. Thank you. Hi folks, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's LFN webinar. Um, today's session is being produced by our end user advisory group and our topic is CSPs explore ONAP consumption models. Um, before we get into introducing our speakers, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, all of the attendees will be muted during the presentation. However, if you have questions, there is a Q&A uh, dialog box at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to type in your questions at any time. We will leave some time open at the end of the presentation to go over those Q and A's live. Um, also, the webinar will be recorded and available for viewing uh, tomorrow. So anyone who registered will get an emailed link to that live or to that recording. Okay, so let's go ahead and introduce our uh, speakers. If we can click to the next slide, please. So joining us today is Javier Hare. He's a her. He's a technology strategy architect, senior leader, advisor, and consultant with Telecom Argentina. And we've got Li Huang. She's a researcher at China Mobile Research Institute. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our panelists. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joe. Good morning. Good afternoon, evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the EOAG webinar, CSPs Explore ONAP Consumption Models. Um, today, Javier and I will bring you Louis's presentation today. Um, indeed, we have recently produced a survey and white paper about the adoption of ONAP within service providers, which shares the views on the most important considerations, opportunities, and impediments towards assemblies and user ONAP deployment. Today's uh, webinar will cover the key considerations for conception aspects of ONAP. What are the challenges, key concerns, models, and reference, as well as the opportunities for CSPs looking at projects like ONAP. So um, today's webinar is an overview introduction of the ONAP conception white paper. Um, if you want to know more details, please click click the link to download the white paper. Um, next page, please. Sure. So, um, so today, Javier and I will lead you to explore the consumption and adoption model of ONAP from CSP's perspective. 
Our sharing will start from the introduction part, then we will explain the purpose of this white paper. After that, we will bring you the options and analysis of consumption models. Also, based on what we have surveyed in CSPs, we will introduce some key findings and bring up some recommendations from CSPs view. And we will also summarize these observations and recommendations. Um, specifically, as shown in this page, Javier will be responsible for the introduction, purpose, consumption models, and will give the conclusion from the survey and ana analysis. And I will lead you go through the conclusions and suggestions of the survey one by one. So uh, let's welcome Javier first. Okay. Thank you, Lee. And thank you also, Jill, for for the introduction and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending uh, where you are. And uh, in, in this slide, you have the, the, the agenda. As you can see, uh, we will do firstly an, an overview and next uh, we go uh, uh, through the purpose of, of this white paper. Uh, remember that this presentation is a summary about the white paper title on a consumption model as Lee mentioned, a service provider perspective published by the uh, EUAG Working Group from the Linux Foundation Networking in June uh, 2020. Afterward, we will go uh, through the rest of the topic already enumerated by, by, by Lee. So, going to the, to the introduction, in this, is, in this slide, let me do a brief uh, introduction about the e, uh, EUAG scope and objective, and also about the open source advantage and honor particularity. Probably most of you already know uh, uh, the end user advisory group, but for those people not familiar with this working group, you have on the left side of the slide a quick overview. The end user advisory group was created by the Linux Foundation Networking to share view, challenge, and best practices between user organizations, highlighting, highlighting uh, new areas of opportunity of the developer community. It's made of individuals from different user organizations, referees as CSPs, and as the voice of the end user, the end user advisory group supports also the vision of honor. Going to the to the or, or, or seen on, on the on the right side of the of the line, um, you have uh, some uh, topics. The first one is the uh, open source projects advantage. Um, uh, one one more thing that maybe I, I forget is that uh, remember that the end uh, user advisory group is is the author of, of the white paper, looking for understanding the on app consumption. Lee has already mentioned that, an adoption model within the CSP, and finally, uh, facilitating them. Uh, uh, I was talking about the, uh, that on the right side of the, of, of the slide, you have some topics that probably, again, every one of, of you knows. Um, additionally, uh, all of these aspects, I, I, um, I, I will all this aspect that I will describe, uh, you can find with more details uh, uh, in the white paper. Okay, but uh, going directly to the advantage of, of the of the open source, uh, as everybody knows, they are related to to the code uh, being publicly available and open for others, what, which enables the crowd source, the co-create, and so on. And for this reason. The CSP has right have uh, right now choices. The, the, what the choices uh, one of the choices is proprietary versus open source, or even a combination of both. But uh, clearly, the advantage of the open source um, uh, is that it allows the access to the underlying uh, underlying uh, functionality versus uh, service and support encapsulation. Also, community collaboration versus vendor decisions, collective intelligence versus uh, individual vendor leadership. Finally, open source is a, is a choice 
to accelerate innovation cycle pace, have a roadmap definition visibility, just to name some of them. And the, 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 the last but not least is, uh, uh, is a really important aspect that is the uh, on a scale, scale and, and nature. We are, dealing, we are dealing right now with a very special case. This case is very challenging for the community since currently there are not many projects with similar characteristics. Again, talking about the scale and, and, and nature. Uh, neither in the past, again, we are dealing with a very, very particular project. So we are trying to illuminate as part of the uh, UAG uh, working group, the consumption challenge the mo models, consideration, and opportunity regarding ONA. Let's go to the purpose of this uh, uh, white paper. But first, uh, let me uh, explain something about the general scenario. The, 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 we are living in what we call in the, in the paper the now economy. Uh, we don't have time enough to go deeper into detail but uh, uh, this now economy is part of a much broader scenario of changes, perhaps as the humankind never seen before, which is the fourth industrial revolution. For those in, interested in, in, on this, you can consult source like, uh, for example, such as the World Economic Forum, okay, in which they talk uh, 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 change the, uh, of such magnitude that maybe they are uh, asking themselves if we will continue as, as, as homo sapiens. Um, but coming back to the now economy, consumers are demanding new services and, and these services being offered or deployed in almost real time. For this reason, we talk in the, in the white paper about agility, flexibility, efficiency, everything that you can see in the, in the, in the slide. And what does it mean for the CSP? This has a huge impact in the CSP because they need to transform structurally to meet this consumer requirement, becoming what is called DSP, Digital Service Provider. That means go from an infrastructure-centric uh, uh, view to a service-centric paradigm, uh, even adopting some principles that allow it in uh, the hyperscale uh, be successful. The open source platform uh, or the model of uh, the, the, the model based on open source platform is completely aligned with to this vision because enables agile service design, deployment and management to satisfy customer demand. Now on the right side, you have something that we call the initiative uh, fragmentation. And, and on the right side, we, we will list a, a couple of, of, of challenges related to open source and other initiative uh, fragmentation. They difficult resource and effort focus and also CSP uh, option for, for, for selection, the, the right tools. Uh, this is the reason why uh, in, in, in the bottom part, you can see that uh, the, we try to represent the, the need to accelerate the cooperation, the collaboration and the alignment between all these initiatives and also with the SDO, the Standard Development Organization. In the middle of the slide, finally, you have a, a, a picture that is a sum, summary of this aspect. Let me uh, briefly uh, uh, go through this picture. Uh, we have a, a service-centric vision enabled by APIs and a model-driven approach and analytics assisting in, in network operation, improving customer experience, make, making, sorry, making the, the network transparent to users and consumers, and finally arriving to what we call the closed loop or the self-healing self network. Also orchestration and network and application control everything having or including a coordinated, a coordinated work with other initiatives, initiatives and SDO, as we mentioned previously. As a conclusion, with ONAT being able 
to cover the ambition of solving the network autom automation puzzle. Well, uh, in the last three three years, uh, and that is uh, described in the in the white paper, um, the primary uh, the primary uh, on app development focus was the technical robustness of the platform, its uh, functional maturity, and operational readiness. Uh, for this reason, the purpose of, of of this paper is to help provide guidance to CSP who are considering adopting on app. Well, uh, if we take everything we have uh, described or we have been talking during this presentation, we can do a recap about the, the current ONAP scenario. Uh, on the left side, you can find some of the high level uh, topics. For example, the need, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the future service will be very different to the service that we have currently. And that means that we need to transform from CSP to DSP. Also, ONAP has gained a significant traction recently, uh, delivering the value to users uh, due to the reasons that I described in the previous slide. We have also uh, described when we talk about the scale, scale and nature, uh, we have also talked about the complexity of, the, of, of this project. And, and finally, uh, for all the reason, uh, the CSP should consider multiple aspects to integrate ONAP with uh, their existing environment. This is a high level, but this last point can be spread in some other uh, uh, aspect or detail of, or, or bullets, okay, um, uh, that uh, explain what does mean for the CSP. For example, the integrated solution with carrier grade version of on and module, service model, application, and microservice uh, uh, will to build to, to run in on app, the, the compliant networking infrastructure, including PNF, CNF, BNF, controllers, also uh, connected to on app, operate operational, operational changes. Uh, developer, tester, and designer needing to deliver and operate service uh, through this platform and ensuring uh, ONAP as a security problem. Many uh, can be many, many other considerations, but uh, uh, what we are trying to say here is that the, 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 the several aspects that the CSP should consider. Okay, uh, the, uh, again, this slide is just uh, a visual representation about the initiative proliferation and the need to harmonize them, including SDO on the right side of the, of the slide. Let me remark that there is a re recent uh, paper launched or published by the Linux Foundation Networking about this harmonization. In this particular case, it is about the open source project and the standardization bodies harmonization, including 5G network slicing with ONA. In this picture, probably we can discuss uh, some of element or aspect uh, or, or this, uh, I mean, uh, needs of harmonization, but the objective, uh, the, the final objective uh, of, of this picture is, is, is again, to show you the uh, complexity of the scenario that we are we are dealing with. In this slide, um, in this case, we would like to to represent just a proposal for the end user advisor group about the steps to follow an 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 on app deployment and reach a, a let's say a positive result. It starts with the with the bottom up vision in in which uh, uh, in the first step you have to solve the integration uh, with the network element. I mean the Sauban interface. The next step is uh, take a, a, a service management approach in order to orchestrate and be able to to deliver this new service that the uh, as we mentioned the 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 consumer will be uh, asking us. And finally, 
uh, in, in order to, to, to reach um, some exponential value uh, creation, include the machine learning and artificial intelligence see, in, in order to reach the, the, the closed loop. But again, it is just a, a, a proposal. This working group is aware, as we have been talking during, during the presentation, and as we will see also in the conclusion of the survey that uh, Lee will, will present, that th there is not a single path, a golden receipt or a silver bullet, uh, a silver bullet to, to deal with this challenge. Therefore, and let me remark that specifically, uh, each CSP will have their own definition and decisions according with their reality. Many aspects are, uh, are involved in, in this decision, such as the CSP business strategy, culture, process, processes, general context, countries, region, macroeconomy, organization level of mat maturity, company scale, competency, and so on. Well, finally, uh, we arrive to maybe the core of, of of, of the white paper and, and, the, and the survey. That is the conception model. In this slide, I will present them uh, quickly and we will go through each one of them uh, in the next slide. Uh, basically, a project like ONAP can be consumed, as we mentioned, in, in multiple ways by CSP. The first uh, model that we we discuss with uh, we call complete auto, aut autonomy model. In this model, the CSP is the responsible uh, to um, build the software and deliver it in house. Afterward, we have a second uh, type of model, which we call complete outsourcing model in which the uh, CSP engage with the system integrator, a PSI, a primary system integrator, or maybe a vendor who can do all this stuff for them. I mean, the, the, the deployment and the delivery. Uh, we have also a third uh, model, uh, which we call um, a semi outsourcing model in which uh, the CSP look for uh, some uh, distro, okay? And uh, this, this ONAP distro is what they deploy in, the, in their organization. And finally, what we, uh, a fourth uh, uh, model type that is called standard based reference implementation in which the CSP uh, take ONAP as a reference and look for a, for a vendor or, or, or something else, a third party, in order to develop a, a proprietary tool uh, that follow the, 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 the ONA features and, and evolution. So let's go right now uh, uh, through each one of them. First, we have the complete, the complete autonomy model, okay? In this model, as I mentioned, the CSP are participating directly in the ONA deployment and delivery in, uh, and everything being done in, in house. What are the advantages of this, of this model? Well, the CSP has the code control, the, uh, can do the uh, platform enhance or, cost, or customization when it is needed. And, uh, at, and at the end, it promotes and an open source culture uh, within the organization. Remember that we need to, to do a huge change uh, within our, uh, our organization, including the culture. Talking about the disadvantage, maybe the disadvantage, uh, in, in some way, the, the disadvantage are the other phase of the advantage, if, if, if you allow me. Uh, they include the effort to construct this culture and teams to deal with this challenge, the, the mindset organization changes and uh, the in, an important impact in the, oper in the operative model. Uh, related to the, to the second uh, model that we described, the complete outsourcing, CSP are still in control 
but delegate in control of, of I mean, of the of, of, of the platform, but delegate it to third party, integrator or vendor. I mean, in this case, the CSP are still the accountable, but the third party are the responsible. Related to the advantage, CSP uh, delegate the tax in, in, in a third part, which in some way alleviate the, them uh, of some tax and uh, same, same when issues uh, occur or arise during the delivery. Uh, on the other side, the disadvantage are that the CSP uh, have to keep track or, or track of, of, of the changes, requirements, and so on. Therefore, they still have a hard work to do. Additionally, uh, the CSP can become dependent in some way of the, of the third party. Okay. Right now, we will go to the third uh, model, which we call semi-outsourcing model. It is a well-known model in the industry. CSP uh, trusting in, in a distro, uh, sometimes prepackaged. Uh, let me give you uh, an, 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 ex an example it, that can be similar to what is happening today with some uh, uh, open stack distro. And again, that is just to give you an example that can clarify the model. Related to advantage, the, the distro uh, or, or the distro responsible can deliver a platform already tested and fit for the CSP purpose. Uh, development in house can still be done. The third party uh, responsible for the distro and CSP can take advantage of the uh, professional service of the distro owner, for example. And related to disadvantage, uh, uh, if the delivery doesn't match or cover properly the need uh, or, or uh, that the uh, CSP has defined. Some friction can arise. Another challenge, challenge can be the management of several teams participating in the delivery. We again, we again repeat that this is a, a huge project, a very, very challenging project. And additionally, uh, as part of the disadvantage, the monitoring and constant alignment is need uh, is need between the the responsible of the distro and the CSP in order to, to be sure that the, that the features or the, or the behavior of the distro is what the uh, CSP uh, has defined. Finally, the fourth uh, uh, model uh, is uh, that we call standard-based reference implementation is another well-known model in the industry. ONAP, uh, in this case, ONAP is a reference implementation and the CSP choose a, a partner, a vendor, I mean, a third party in general, which develop a platform with similar characteristics or features that, uh, than ONAP. Uh, you can ask what are the advantages? Uh, well, uh, CSP choose ONAP as, as, as reference and select the vendors uh, the vendor's product that best fit the requirement. Depending the vendor selected uh, is also the, the success, the, 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 the probability of, of success because uh, the platform belong entirely to this third party. And the disadvantage is that uh, we have the risk to not be able to, to, to develop within the company a software culture. Okay, it, it, uh, uh, what I mean is to not uh, make the change that the market is asking us. And also the dependency of the vendor uh, is still high. But anyway, this can be uh, an strength also and not an, uh, a disadvantage uh, depending of the CSP strategy. Again, remember that each CSP uh, has to find what is the most suitable uh, model for them. Uh, in this case, this can be even uh, every, every one of the model, but uh, uh, except the, the first one, but uh, uh, 
this, this four uh, model can be even an intermediate step in the journey to in the journey to to a software centric culture. Okay, so Lee, with this uh, I finished the first part, and I think I can share with you the the screen to to continue. Yeah, thank you, Javier. So let me start sharing. Um, and in this page, um, I will bring you the CSPs survey around a consumption model. Indeed, for collecting the consumption and deployment situation of CSPs, we have designed a comprehensive survey in the early period of writing this white paper within EOAG in anonymous format. The survey contains 15 questions covering on-app deployment, community participation, interoperability, service scenarios, traditional OSS integration with ONAP and other issues. These questions are common issues that service providers generally pay attention to in the process of deploying ONAP. It can not only represent the basic requirements from CSP, but also reflect the application and deployment um, pattern of ONAP in future. In this part, the white paper will analyze the relevant consumption experience through nine key findings based on the feedback of this survey for reference and give some recommendations from EOAG CSP's perspective. The first key finding is about the status and future of ONAP consumption and deployment. Um, from CSP's responses, we can analyze that about 80% of uh, CSPs said they range from having a deployed version of ONAP in production to they have plans to begin lab but evaluation of ONAP and no one said they have no plan to adopt ONAP. This shows that among the LFN EOH members who respond, ONAP is clearly a part of the network plans, with CSPs taking material steps to increase the level of ONAP adoption in the near term. And in terms of this key finding, EOAG recommend that while nearly half of CSPs surveyed have concrete plans to adopt ONAP in production, there are still several continuing to evaluate in their DAP. So ONAP community um, would better explore if there are specific focus areas that could increase adoption in production. To further accelerate the adoption of ONAP, EOAG should further explore what, what is happening CSP's efforts in deploying ONAP. Based on key finding one, for who are consuming and have plans for ONAP deployment? What components of ONAP are they planning to use? From CSP's response, around 55% plan to introduce mature ONAP components one by one on a per application scenario basis with specific um, focus on interoperability between newly introduced components and existing OSS which account for the majority. And in terms of this key finding, EOAG recommend that further study could be undertaken to determine what is uh, properly under uptake of certain ONAP modules and which use cases prompt deployment of which ONAP modules. This would provide very useful information for other communities on prioritization and improvements. And with respect to CSP's ONAP adoption plans, each operators have different consumption models and strategies, each of them with its own advantage and unique features that are most suitable to their specific circumstances. The EOAG has classified these approaches into four basic types. Um, as mentioned in Harvey's slides, uh, there are four of them. One is complete autonomy model, and another is complete outsourcing model, and also we have semi-outsourcing model and standard-based reference model. 
uh, and we can see from the survey that uh, the feedback from the survey shows uh, equal split across the consumption model. Approximately a third choose complete outsourcing model, while about a quarter are planning on the complete autonomy model and the standard-based reference model, respectively. An interesting observation here is that the CSPs are almost equally a split among the very different models. This shows that ONAP can be used in-house, but there is also enough interest in ONAP to create a support community of vendors that will assist CSPs. Uh, this should allay any inhibitions that vendor community may have on ONAP. So to serve the widest set of CSP deployment plans, EOAG recommends that the ONAP community should enable all of these consumption models above. According to different consumption models, which can be classified to different deployment patterns. In terms of survey investi investigation, we have summarized the following three deployment patterns. They are centralized deployment, uh, distributed deployment pattern, and hierarchical deployment pattern. And there are still around 45% of CSPs said they were uncertain or unable to respond to this question. Uh, in terms of what we have analyzed above, we consider that while the centralized deployment pattern received the most responses, given the variation and lack of clear feedback, the ONAP community should provide a flexible and decoupled architecture that allows CSP to choose different deployment patterns. In the process of ONAP consumption, uh, operators usually need to carry out the division of labor and cooperation between internal teams and third-party cooperative vendors. From the analysis in the white paper, the CSPs participate in ONAP uh, deployment, uh, development, operation, and testing accounts for more than 90% of total surveyed, and most of them are at least involved in the deployment, operation, and testing process. According to the analysis result, EOAG recommend that community may undertake consumption model compared with deployment model matrix, along with statistic and pattern for various activity done by participate CSP vendors or system integrators, which could be a community asset for CSP and user for reference while deciding on ONAP adoption approach. For different consumption models and deployment patterns. Operators have several service scenarios that they focus on. With regard to these scenarios, we provide the following list to reflect the current deployment and future concern of these surveys. And in, in the above list, uh, we can see from the slide, uh, service maturity index here reflects the maturity extent of the current surveys, the surveys with the lower maturity index has greater potential to be researched, and the surveys with higher maturity index has less, uh, has less research space, which is now very mature and does not need to invest more in future for deeper research. And indeed, EOAG did the survey with a limited set of service or use cases put in front of CSP and some open-ended question on its area. Present CSP's focus seemed to uh, suggest a propensity towards newer service, which has more scope for automation, which ONAP has to offer. EOAG believe that ONAP has to evolve to a platform where it can act as an enabler for future service, even for service or use cases that are yet to evolve. 
in addition to service scenarios for existing network element and new network element management methods. Most of the operators indicate that they would choose to integrate ONAP with the existing OSS system, which is also the current trend. For operators who are chosen to integrate with OSS, the current integration patterns include the following. Um, the first one, ONAP and traditional OSS, manage different management objects are constructed separately and operate independently of each other, which accounts for 18%. Uh, uh, the second one is ONAP and, tr and traditional OSS manage different management objects are constructed separately, while ONAP is responsible for directly managing new network elements, which account for 36%. The third one, ONAP and traditional OSS manage different management objects are constructed separately, while OSS is responsible for directly manage traditional network elements, which account for 9%. And in addition, we have also 9% operators that they would decide different integration methods based on different situation and use cases instead of using a single integration solution. Um, AOAG survey has stated the obvious. CSPs are unclear about how to protect their existing investments in existing OSS, as in some cases, there is duplicity in functionality provided by ONAP and OSS. Key aspect that ONAP community must ensure is how various southbound and northbound integra integration can work. And additionally, on a best effort basis, a series of artifacts explain our new, uh, a few OSS functions and how can ONAP play an integrated value adding role would be useful. About the organization models in CSP, nearly half of CSPs have adopted the loosely coupled model, which account for the largest proportion. The independent model and tightly coupled model accounts for 9% each respect, respectively, and remain 36% were not sure or could otherwise not share a response. For CSP's perspective, um, it can clearly show that ONAP community has a very important responsibility to help CSP adopt the most suitable model that works for them. None of which can be singled out as the best or worst. Ultimately, each CSP has to work in their own model with as much support that ONAP the community can extend. In addition, we like to figure out what the network function operations will CSP use on app. The responses to this question are fairly balanced overall, but the result suggests the CSP that are using or plan to use on app in production more are interested in the service delivery aspects than the service assurance capability provided by on app. About this key finding, we think that the CSP are currently using or planning to utilize the full range of ONAP service delivery and service assurance capability for network functions with um, at least initially somewhat more focus on service delivery aspects. So after that, um, Javier will bring you some conclusion and and the recommendation and observations based on the survey. So, yeah. Thank you, Lee. Um, let, let me let me explain or or or, just, uh, or uh, let you know that um, this these are um, just a, a summary of the conclusion and and the, <laughs> in the with uh, white paper you have a, a table with uh, eight, nine or nine options in which we describe a different conclusion in, in detail. But basically the conclusion, uh, we were talking about, uh, I mean, uh, during the 
presentation, we were uh, uh, in, in some way going through the conclusions and, and Lee mentioned uh, many of them. Um, uh, the owner consumption model and the and, and, the, and it, it ecosystem uh, for for adoption is not is not an easy topic. Remember what we talk about the the nature and the scale and and the particularity of, of this project. Uh, in, uh, the the second part is there is not a single or correct answer to to the challenge. Uh, uh, again each uh, csp will have their own answer uh, in order to 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 move to move fo forward with with uh, such kind of of of, of, pro of project uh, there are several cho uh, choices and and uh, and, and dependency each with different trade off and would work is uh, would work and is most suitable for one csp may be vastly different from the another one which is related with the previous uh, uh, comment or the previous uh, bullet uh, additionally something that we uh, already mentioned that there is a lot of fragmentation in the vision from the from from various from the various uh, csp uh, it, it is perhaps because most of them are in the early stage of, of deployment uh, one of the examples what uh, lee mentioned related to the architecture um, uh, most of them uh, have select in the in the survey the the centralized architecture, but 50% uh, respond that they are not sure about the centralized or uh, hierarchical architecture. So this, this fragmentation probably, or this uh, uh, number of, 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 of answer, 50%, half of them uh, saying uh, not sure, means that there is a, uh, we, we, th there is a fragmentation in the vision uh, and Probably because we are in, as uh, uh, we are mentioning in the conclusion, we are in the earliest stage of deployment, and we need to gain more experience and expertise in the in the platform. Additionally, uh, Lee mentioned also this uh, this topic is the way the question were designed uh, uh, were uh, representing a mix uh, between current uh, to short term and medium to long term perspective for different questions. So maybe. For the reason you have a mix and uh, in, in, in the answers, and uh, finally the uh, end user advisory group from the Linux Foundation and Working has multiple recommendations and observations from the, this survey, which are summarized in the in the in the white paper. I mean, these are the table that I was talking about at the very beginning of, of this slide. So, Lee, uh, that's it for, from my side. Okay, thank you, Javier. And, and just in our last page, and I would like to uh, express many thanks to our group members. Uh, this paper has been authored by the members of our EOAG team and would not have been possible without the countless base discussions and uh, dedication and hard work of many contributors. We would also want to acknowledge members who took time to answer the survey, which ultimately lead to curation of data and the deployment of this white paper. Thank you very much for uh, the contribution and the reviews. And also, uh, I want to mention that uh, EOAG is also planned to uh, produce another two white papers uh, around uh, 5G and uh, automated testing. And if you are uh, members of this piece, we will can come and, and join us. So thank you. That's all of our today's sharing of our uh, white paper slides. Great, thank you uh, both. Um, so let's turn the, we've got a few more minutes left, so we'll um, answer some Q&A. Um, so here's the uh, first question that came in. Um, with the complete outsourcing model, how much knowledge of ONAP is required to be able to manage the process and maintain the deployments? I don't know, Lee, if, if you want, or I, I, can, I can mention, you are talking about the complete outsourcing model, right? Yep, that's that's what it looks like. Yep. 
Well, uh, in my personal point of view, uh, you need a, a, a lot of knowledge because although you are um, uh, in some way delegating the the deployment, I mean the development and deployment uh, tasks to a third party, you will you will be at the end the, the accountable for 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 these tasks. So uh, it's a good model, I think because um, you alleviate your, your company in order to do a lot of, uh, a lot of tax, uh, I mean, uh, 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 even related to, to, to the, the people from your organization involved in, in, the, in, the, in the project, but at the end, you will need a, a team that, uh, or your, your company will be accountable, or you will need a team with a deep knowledge uh, uh, about the platform. So um, the short answer is you will need a, a, a lot of knowledge of, of the platform, at, at least the team that uh, will be working on that and, and uh, uh, um, being accountable and, and delegating and working with the, with the third party. Great, thank you. Um, so another question that we have is, do you see these four consumption models patterns shifting over time as ONAP becomes even more modular? Um, I, Lee, do you want to, to answer? Or uh, yes, maybe I can try to um, answer these questions. And indeed, um, at present, uh, our white paper has least the um, um, application deployment challenge of these four models. Um, in operators, um, list information can uh, is um, provide for your reference. And uh, however, um, we have a lot e elaborated on specific uh, on app consume cases of uh, operators in this white paper. Uh, so uh, uh, because this uh, white paper mainly hopes to uh, analyze the uh, current uh, ONAP application and deployment status and future trends uh, from uh, such um, kind of macro perspective. And uh, in, in fact, we have uh, classified and sort out these four types of uh, models based on current operators application deployment situation. And uh, um, yes, and it, this is just for reference. And uh, regarding to these four types of, of models, um, in order to have a deeper understanding of them within operators, uh, we have uh, conducted a survey and reached some key conclusion in white paper uh, for reference. And all, all above information can be found in white paper. So okay. um, she, she has to compliment, I agree with me. And she has to compliment. Uh, I, I would say from a personal point of view, that that is possible mainly going from the from the uh, option four uh, to option one mainly in this direction because you you can you can start uh, uh, gaining some uh, expertise in the in the tool up to the time in which your it depends i mean there is not uh, as we mentioned during the whole presentation there is no uh, silver bullet or just a a golden receipt in order to to do that but what i can see is that some organizations can can see the the the, the model uh, four or or three as a way to 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 gain expertise in the in the platform in order to jump to uh, another more challenging uh, scenarios uh, like the number two or or, or one depend, depending obviously of all the the aspects that we mentioned i mean the business strategy the organization scale the uh, general context the culture etc great thank you um we did have a question about um sharing the slides um so yes the slides will be available um along with the recording after afterwards tomorrow um Another question, do we also need a consumption adoption model white paper like this one to be prepared for X and F vendors? Sorry? 
Um, do we also need a consumption adoption model white paper similar to this one to be prepared for X and F vendors? Okay. Um, um, indeed, uh, we, we, we have um, already published uh, this kind of um, it's kind of white paper as the uh, first uh, step to uh, in a uh, consumption and adoption field. And uh, um, also in the process of writing this paper, uh, we have also planned to uh, publish a kind of specific white paper uh, such as uh, best practice uh, white paper in CSP uh, based on the application practice of operators and, and it may uh, more focus on interoperability. So um, I think if you are interested in some specific practical applications, uh, you can try to uh, continue to pay attention to EOAG dynamics. All right, I think we have time for one last question. Um, so can you explain which consumption models your companies, Telecom Argentina and China Mobile have chosen? and if that approach or the model is gonna evolve over time. Ah, mm, do you have answers, Javier? So, oh. <laughs> I, I think, oh. I think, I think <laughs> if you want to more, know more details, maybe you can try to uh, chat with us offline. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's maybe a better way. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, same same for me. We we can we can mm -hmm. talk uh, offline about that. Okay, great. Well, with three minutes left, I think we can conclude today's session. So thank you to our presenters. Thank you to all of our attendees. And as we mentioned, a recording of this and the slides will both be available um, likely tomorrow. So thanks again, and we hope to see you on another LFN webinar coming up soon. Have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.